Alrighty, hello everyone. Welcome back to the Steel Series Southeast Asian Cup Season 4. This is game one of a best of three between Rex Region Kaon and AMD Mineski. RQ being an Indonesian team and Mineski being a Filipino team. Um, thank you, of course, to Still Series for sponsoring this Ten tournament, as well as Dota Talk for very kindly allowing me to cast it. Should be a nice game coming up. Last Five time RQ met remaining. Mineski, they did actually beat them out in a best of one, so I'm expecting Mineski probably wanting a little bit of revenge Reserve and time. redeeming their name. Uh, in terms of, you know, the bets on Dota 2 Lounge at the moment, it looks like it's drawing pretty Radiant close, honestly. So, a lot of rares are on the line. 52 to 48 Dyer percent, so it looks like everyone is uh, pretty unsure about who's going to be winning, so it should be should be a pretty exciting game, honestly. Um, and they are going straight into the bands already. Um, see, a Venomancer as well as an Arkham is being banned out. Ten seconds remaining. I'm not too Five sure. I mean, remaining. what exactly they're intending on picking up or banning out this game? I mean, I know RQ <sighs> likes to pick up the Invoker for Koala, but I mean, last night they didn't pick Radiant that up at all. Um, there is a Timbersaw still in the pool, so they could decide Dyer to grab that or maybe something like a Venomancer. Not a Venomancer, sorry, a Viper. Not a Viper. Oh my god. Visage. I knew it started with a V. I was like, what's the name of the hero that starts with V? But no, they're going to go for the first pick of a Slark, so we could be seeing Radiant maybe a Mid Slark. Um, otherwise, Ritter might grab it in the off lane. I'm pretty sure we saw a Mid Slark last night coming up from RQ. Okay, and they did Q, Q. I'm sorry, I've just like lost English in that, that brief rest between the two games. I will try and regain my command of the English language as we go. But, um, yeah, so it should be interesting to see exactly where they lay this. If they're going to put it mid yeah, or if they're going to run it as in something more like an uh, offlane hero. Mineski pick. responding with that immediate pickup of Marana, so Jules' favourite. So you can play Marana every single game ever. <laughs> I'm usually going for a Midas into a Lincoln Sphere and just kind of split pushing, followed up by a Manta, that's his kind of standard build on the Marana. They do have the option now to pick up something to combo with it, such as a Bane, a Shadow Demon, uh, maybe a Rubik as well as another option. Otherwise they could go for an aggressive support, such as a Visage that I was attempting to talk about earlier. Um, Crystal Maiden's still in the pool as well, so they could Ten maybe grab her. Remaining. They probably want to get some kind of AoE stuns, even something like a Nyx Assassin, just to ensure Five they can shut down the Slark, remaining. since when that Slark casts his ultimate, he's essentially invulnerable, bar, um, you know, when he's got his you know, an AoE stun or an AoE nuke onto him. So, Shadow Demon will be the pickup, so a nice combo there for Marana. And... I mean, it does give Marana a good lineup for the stun, as well as a good kind of defensive disruption or offensive disruption. So... I mean, he's a, a well-rounded hero, and I mean, Shadow Demon's kind of come back into the meta game. He did fade out for a little while, but he has become uh, more and more prevalent, especially combined with a Murano, who's just made, you know, a, a huge leap into Ten popularity, um, especially within the Southeast Asian scene. So RQ might want to respond with picking Five up their own strong support remaining. at this point. Like I said, Crystal Maiden, she's pretty much a, you know, one of the most popular heroes, really. <laughs> Even with the Crystal time. Maiden, maybe they want to grab something like a... Uh, Rubik, otherwise they could pick up a mid hero, maybe grabbing the Outworld Devourer. Depends on if they want to run the Slark mid or as an offlaner. If they want to run Slark as a mid, they might grab something like a Timbersaur as well. It's it's very, very variable, but they're going to pick up a strong support for themselves, ensuring that they do at least have one, you know, you know, very uh, viable support. And Crystal Maiden is quite a nice pickup because it enables them to run kind of more of dual lane spaces. Um, Stace space because uh, you could have Crystal Maiden in the jungle picking up you know someone a support such as an X Assassin or a Visage who's going to be pulling the uh, the lane while you know Crystal Maiden gets farmed and the carry farms in Five lane as well remaining. so they could pick up something like a Weaver as a carry if they wanted to someone with a lot more mobility and with the Slack and Weaver it would mean that they're going to be time. very very hard to catch in team fights and kind of force Mineski into considering picking up some kind of an AOE stun like an Earthshaker to really shut them down. Um, next ban out, so RQ might want to ban out no. some more, well offlaner, so getting rid of the Timbersaw. Radiant um, team ban. So getting rid of the Timbersaw, Mineski might ban out something like the Elder Titan if they uh, they want to, but they're going to ban out the Weaver, so not really giving team RQ the opportunity to pick up that Weaver carry like I was talking about. Yeah. Radiant team ban. Uh, Nyx Assassin also going to be banned out, so no AoE stun from the Nyx Assassin like I was also saying. Um, 
getting rid of the the chance that you know they can have a shadow demon followed up by an assassin's done with the Marana arrow, you know, coming out Ten as well from there. Um, RQ are an Indonesian Five team. Five seconds remaining. Indonesian. Uh, so we are going to be banned up by Mineski. I mean, really, the hero pool is just so open, and it kind of depends on what Mineski want to do. Since they do normally go for a very ganking-oriented lineup, they probably want to ban out those heroes that are, well, I suppose, countered oh. by mobility or very, you know, high strength, such as, Radiant you know, Weaver, because Weaver's pick. very hard to catch, and Bristleback, because he's very hard to kill. So Mineski want to leave the pool open for heroes that they can pick off and, you know, get the track, not track, all um, just get, you know, a hero kill advantage and the gold snowballing forward from there. Whereas RRQ, I mean, they have a similar playstyle. I do notice them tend to go a little bit more teamfight oriented, I suppose. So we could be seeing them pick up something like a Chen that does have a bit more teamfight presence or tower pushing presence. But I mean, again, it really it really depends on how these two teams feel like remaining. playing. Since I mean, they haven't met in a while, and um, five seconds remaining. Yeah, the, the style has changed a little bit. I mean, like like we were saw watching Mineski last weekend. You know, it's they went for a CK Wiss, something that I've never seen them play before. So it feels like Mineski might be considering kind of shifting their play style to, you know, be a, another another way. Um, it's very very. I mean, it's really interesting. Um, that CK Wisp, I'd never ever seen Mineski pick up a Wisp before. <laughs> so it was, it was very interesting on how they decided to play that. But I mean, I feel like at this point, Mineski would be quite good to pick up the mid hero and just secure themselves a strong mid laner. If they want to take something like a Dragon Knight to give themselves a bit more pushing viability, they definitely could. Otherwise, something like an Atwell Devourer would give them, you know, that kind of strong control over the mid lane. Though, of course, Razor's still the pool, as well as, um, you know, basically all the Atwell Devourer counters are still just sitting right there. So maybe they don't feel comfortable picking up an Atwell Devourer quite yet. They could go for something like a Queen of Pain, which I know they are quite fond of as well, giving them that big AoE, and a lot of AoE in fact to take down the Slark, since Slark cannot dodge the Queen of Pain, well I mean he can dodge them, but he can't, you know, go invisible and then not get hit by them, he will still get hit by the Queen of Pain, so a lot of damage that could potentially go onto him there, if they do decide to pick that up, or the Puck is another option, but that's Silence, if they can catch Slark just after he uses a Dark Pack, they can potentially, you know, keep him silent long enough to take him down. But man, Mineski are really, really thinking about this pick, or Jay is DC'd. Could be either or. Kind of hard to tell. Looks like no. Looks like looks like Mineski is still there. Just, just thinking about it. Ten seconds um, remaining. Wow, are they really going to random their pick? They really have no Five idea what they want. What are they remaining. doing? Did I? Did I? Bounty hunter. No, nope, they're going to pick up the bounty hunter. They were thinking about that so hard. Wow. But hey, it does suit the the normal play style of just you know, getting pick offs and killing stuff and killing more stuff and then more pick offs and more killing of stuff, so nothing to complain about there in terms of Mineski playstyle. But what day is it today? It's Sunday. Ten okay. seconds um, remaining. But yeah, I mean, that does mean they're going to have a bit of a lack of team fight at this Five point. I feel like they need remaining. also a bit of damage too. I mean, the toss does an okay amount of damage, but, you know, it's, n it's not really an AoE thing, and it's you really want to have some AoE damage to take down the Slark. Of course, the track will be quite useful against that Slark. Alright, All right, I'm like choking now. Ah, oh, it's a good day today. It is a good day today. Um, so RRQ, they want to probably get some more of a you know, tanky type heroes, I guess, because at the moment they're a very squishy liner, but Slack and Crystal Maiden are going to be, I suppose, food for the bounty hunter. Um, so they're going to be up the Visage, so a nice, strong support there, able of going in a tri-lane versus tri-lane situation if Minescu do decide to run an aggressive tri-lane, as well as being reasonably tanky. I mean, he did have, you know, no magic, re is there no magic resistance in the early levels until he gets up the passive, but regardless, he is still quite tanky and has a decent strength gain, so he's, I would say he's reasonably hard to take down. So, I mean, I do think the Visage is a nice pickup. Um, he's durable. Disabler. As well as Ten good map control, which is remaining. something they do want to have. When you've got a Slark and you want to be ganking, and when you're against a Bounty Five Hunter, you want to ensure that you've got that map control, and with the Visage, they should be, I say, having a decent time with, in terms of map control. Um, and a Sand King pick up from Mineski. Dire team pick. Wowie, they're just going super aggressive. Well, that will fulfill a bit of their damage problem that I was just talking about, as well as another nice Disable and an AoE stun to deal with that Slark. Plus, the Shadow Demon Sand King combo is quite quite nice in the early game for just roaming. We did see it picked up, I believe it was last game, or at least... 
There was a Sand King last game. I think no, it was Bane Sand King. For a girl that's a similar present, pre presence, pre, similar idea. Ten seconds. <laughs> with um, I think you have a P word that starts with P word that starts with P. Man, I cannot speak me. today. Maybe I should talk slower. Maybe that'd help. Um, Shadow Radiant Demon Team and Bang. Sand King. Uh, still uh, the same idea behind that combo. But RQ going to be picking up the Dragonite now. So another nice durable hero with a lockdown, which is uh, what I was saying they needed, and that will give them some pushing ability to take down towers as well. So at this point, um, Dire Team we could Bang. just have uh, you know, Visage and Dragon Knight just pushing down towers together, uh, Crystal Maiden and Slark kind of roaming together to get some pick-offs. Uh, RQ banning out the Conquer pick. now, so... Huh. Kanka's a bit of an interesting fan. I suppose it does combo quite well with the Shadow Demon. Um, but at the same time. Um, I mean, I don't really know if Maneski have room for a Kanka in their lineup. But I guess they are looking at a mid hero now. And I mean, they could take the Outworld Devourer that I was talking about earlier to give themselves a bit more AoE. And they will be grabbing that Outworld Devourer. So a bit of AoE and a nice mid hero that can really shut down the Dragon Knight pretty effectively I would say. I mean Dragonite will just be trying to get some, some farm from a, you know bottle crowing and just using the breathe fire to, to make sure he you know gets whatever CS he needs as well as the levels especially but at the same time um, Owl Devour is going to be having a really nice mid game presence and that pure damage does give Dragonite a bit of grief in the kind of late game phases if it does get to that point. Mineski though are just going for full, full kill Killing is the aim of the game for them. They haven't really got any pushing ability. Five they haven't got any real ability remaining. to take down towers. They just want to get pick offs and kills and kills and kills and kills and get track gold and Reserve use a track time. gold to buy items that will then be used to push down towers. Whereas RQ have got a little bit more of a, I suppose, a well thought out lineup in terms of they've got durability, they've got some nice stuns, they've got some ability to take down towers, and we might be seeing them five many a little bit. Though five many doesn't exactly suit Slark's style of play. I mean, Slark usually wants to get pick offs. Um, I mean, I suppose if you are five manning a tower, Dragonite can kind of initiate in using his ultimate followed up by Dragon Tail, and then Slark can literally just tower dive. Ten as long as he uses remaining. a debuff to kind of depack the stuns um, that will probably Luna. go onto him. It will give him a lot of ability to take damage, but no, Luna is going to be the last pick up for RRQ, so even more pushing ability, and I mean, great late game presence coming out from RRQ. Maneski need to win this game within the first, I would say, 15 to 25 minutes, or they're going to have a lot of difficulty with Koala getting a lot of farm up. Um... Alrighty, and everyone's just picking up their heroes now. I'll go through the players quickly before the game begins. On the side of Mineski, we've got Jay playing the Sand King. Oa, aka Josh, is going to be on the Shadow Demon. Prepare Joven is going to be on the mid Outworld Devourer and he is being pulled. Bounty Hunter is going to be picked up by Jesse Vash and Jules is going to be on the Mirana. On the side of R.R. Kaon, we have got Ritter playing the offlane Slark, or maybe easy lane Slark, depends on if they want to run aggressive or passive tri lane. Endless is going to be on the Visage. Crystal Maiden is going to be played by Jenna. Koala Dota is going to be playing that Luna, and Dragonite is going to be played by NFR. And there might be a level 1 engagement as both teams are heading towards the top lane. Luna's picked up her aura, so going to be a decent amount of damage coming out from uh, from that bad boy. But Jesse Vash will be scouting them out. Haven't got any sentries dropped down, though. They are holding a sentry on the Crystal Maiden, so this gives time for Maneski to go in. They are going to be throwing out an arrow, not landing onto anyone, though, so probably going to be disengaged. I know it looks like they are going to be going forward. Oh, we're going to get pounced upon. A lot of damage onto Oh, but he will get disrupted by Joven. Rita now could be the one taking damage. He doesn't have the pounds, but it looks like they will be backing out for the meantime. No kills going either way quite yet. Going to be dropping down a sentry ward, but Oa could be in a lot of trouble. He just got stuck in the trees there. Nowhere to go. He's going to be going down now. This is disastrous for Mineski. NFR will be able to get one more hit. Maybe onto Joe. No, Jay's going to be able to sense Dara uh, Burrow Strike away and make it away a okay but still, first blood going the way there of Endless on the Visage. So a good amount of gold for him. And Oa immediately pauses the game because Joven's DC'd, but still. I mean, Joven will make it back to lane in time to get some blocks off, but he's already out of regeneration. No kills for him, so he's not going to have that bottle up, and he's going to be in a little bit of trouble. Jesse Vash looks like he's going to be hitting, heading down towards the bot lane, so it will be an aggressive tri lane coming out from Ineski, but what a bad start to this tri lane. They're already out of regeneration, pretty much. I mean, Jules has used up two tangos. Jay is completely out of mana. Oa's heading back to the lane, but he won't be there for a little while. Now, okay, and I've still got five heroes up here. Of course, Crystal Maiden's out of mana and health. Endless has still got up pretty much everything, and Koala, well, he didn't take any damage, so 
this side of this trailing could really be going into the uh, the territory of our Archaeon winning it off. But like I was saying, I mean, Ridder's not going to reach that bot lane for a fair while. He doesn't have enough money for a TP scroll, so unless Endless buys the uh, TP scroll for him, we're using that first blood gold, Ridder's not going to make it down to that first, I mean, that lane before Mineski does. So Jesse Vash should get at least a couple of waves of free farm while Ridder kind of makes his way down there. Um, and I mean, Jovan, like I said, he's also going to be reaching the mid lane. But NFI's already got five magic stick charges, as well as his two tangos, so he should be good to just pop those magic stick charges if he needs to and be back up to near full health and mana. And so be able to reach that lane in, you know, just maybe a wave after uh, Jovan, so he should be good to just start farming. And that bottle is not going to be too far away, already on 325 gold, because not only was he rushing it, but he also got that six reliable gold there from the first blood. Huge plays. Um, and no bottle rush on Jovan, like I was saying. So he's going to be in a bit of trouble. We might be seeing... I mean, Jesse Vash might pull him a Tango, just to give him a bit more of a, a start, but it's going to depend if Jovan ever actually comes back to the game. Anyway, so this aggressive trialing, I mean, in terms of just hero composition, it's a decent aggressive trialing coming out from Maneski, but it's a very kind of one-hit wonder. They're going to disrupt a hero, they're going to sand, king, stun it, Mirana follow up with an arrow, and they will definitely be able to pick off something like a crystal maiden, but then you got to remember that Koala is going to be boosting the damage on Endless, and Endless is going to have up that soul assumption as soon as he hits level 2, so... Jesse Vash, I hate you. That's so annoying. So there's going to be a lot of damage coming out from the side of our Archaeon, um, just because of their heroes. I mean, even with the auto attacks, you know, Crystal Maiden, even though she's basically, you know, normally got very low base damage, 42, or 41, I suppose, before the, the GG branch. Um, I mean, she's going to be hitting for around about, you know, 50 to 60 a hit. Same with the uh, Visage, she's going to be hitting for 60 to 70 a hit, and that does mean there's going to be a lot of harassment, especially because they've got a short... I mean, sorry, a Malay hero as well as... I think Shadow Demon's got short range, isn't he? Yeah, he's only got a 500 attack range by, rather than the normal 600, so... I mean, we saw how quickly he fell then. If he gets caught out of position, he's going to be going down. So it's going to be, I think, a hard aggressive trailing for Mineski to really be going at this point. Um, and everyone's... Everybody was kind of fighting. Na -na 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 -na. As fast as lightning. I don't know what to talk about at this point. We're going to talk about item choices. So, Sand King might be seeing an urn, but most likely if he can get the kills off, he's going to be going straight from Mana Boots into a Blink Dagger. Um, Oa, he's probably just going to be getting support items. Joven, I would assume he's going to be the mech carrier. I can't imagine anyone else picking up the mech on his team, but he might decide to rush a fast four stuff. Though I think a fast mech is going to be able to help their team out quite a lot because it will give them even more ability to, to tower dive as well as deal with the dives coming out from uh, uh, Kaon with that slark. So I think a fast mech should be the item choice of Joven. Though four stuff mech are going to be his core items. Bounty hunter. Probably just going to see Phase Boots drum into... He could go for a Vlad's for extra attack damage and the uh, life steal into him and the Sand King, I suppose. But mostly to see damage and the regeneration. Or, as well as the pushing ability, of course, with the creep waves enabling the creeps to push quite aggressively. Um, or, you know, Phase Boots drum, maybe picking up a bottle. Depends how much bottle crowing Jovan's going to be doing. Um, but BKB could be his item of choice. I think a BKB will be very, very handy this game. For the side of our Archaeon Slark, I don't know how the Slark's going to be building. Normally when you kind of see a Slark, you see them go for PMS, maybe into drums. Uh, no TP scroll, so Ritter's just going to be forced to walk down to that lane. Oh, but Jesse Vash will find a regeneration rune, so that's, that's always nice. Um, but yeah, is he going to go through you know, that Rush Scardy like we see... Um, Socks going for, or is he going to be picking up? I don't know. Well, drums, treads, could be going into a Basha straight. I've seen that before, or a Yasha. Um, it's a bit hard to tell, but he has both playing himself a clarity already. Um, Beside, could be the mech carrier for their team. Oh, okay, I don't really have a dedicated mech carrier within their three cores. Um, Slark probably won't get a mech, he doesn't have the mana pool for it. Luna probably won't get a mech, like Luna won't get a mech, and DK normally not be the mech carry. He normally goes for a, you know, a BKB or a Shadow Blade, depending on if he wants to be initiation powerful for them or not. 
So I can imagine... Oh, DK mid lane taking a bit of harassment there. Um, so I can imagine the Visage might be getting a little bit more farm from the team. We can see he's pulling already, so... With the gold from pulling, he should be able to get up maybe a, a GG branch or two. We can see the pull has already been uh, blocked out by this ward here, so they're not going to be able to use the pull to get the lane back in their control. However, they decided not to block this pull camp out. They will deward it though. They need to have that pull camp up to kind of get the lane into their control. They didn't bother to block out the enemy pulls, and it looks like now they will be. But if you're going to be running... Um, you know, an aggressive trialing, typically you do really want to block this pool camp out, unless you've got a great ability to contest. But anyway, on top lane, Jules taking a lot of harassment. They know he's got RA level 1 since they saw him throw it out before, so they know he is quite susceptible to getting picked off if they do go, you know, onto him. And when he supports, Jay is back up to hey, healed, and uh, always ready to go as well. But, I mean, still at this point, it's going to be quite easy for I think either team to really initiate on. It's going to depend on everyone's positioning. Koala's taking a fair amount of harassment though. The two supports are playing a little bit a bit safely I suppose at this point. Before um, you know they get up level 3 or so they might be a bit scared to fight but I mean at this point I think that if they do decide to go for an initiation onto maybe the Crystal Maiden or the Luna it could be a really nice pick off. I mean the Denied. thing that Mineski have got that uh, Archaeon don't have is the defensive disruption. So if they do decide to initiate onto the, you know, the uh, Luna, or the, sorry, the Marana, for example, the Shadow Demon can just use the disruption offensively to kind of catch them out of position. But now with level two onto uh, the Shadow Demon, maybe they're going to be more interested in going with that Soul Catcher damage buff. It looks like for now they're just going to be pulling the wave and getting it back into their favor, so they can just kind of farm under tower, which is what they want to do. They will be losing the experience to the Radiant, so the Dire. Um, since the Radiant aren't going to be able to defend that, but they will be able to just farm under tower. And actually, it looks like Owl is going to be playing a little bit aggressively, farming from you know down the cliff. But now Endless does spot out that the uh, camp here has been has been blocked. Crystal Maiden hasn't got a sentry anymore. They did use their sentries to do some dewarding, so not going to be able to unblock this pool camp. So that is going to be a nice amount of advantage in terms of lane control coming out from Mineski at this point. On the other lanes, Jesse Vash versus Slark on bot lane. We can see Slark is picking up a level in Essence Shift, so he's going to be using that just to stat steal from Jesse Vash and really give himself an advantage in the lane, which is kind of what you'd expect. Jesse Vash, however, playing very, very cautiously, he's picked up two levels of Donata, just that extra harassment. You can just see them going head to head. I mean, he's got the stat steal, he's got the Donata hit, so both of them have got a kind of nice melee versus melee uh, skill to get the farming up, but it looks like on the whole, Bounty Hunter is pulling ahead just slightly. Um, in terms of farming, and I mean, once Bounty Hunter does get up something like a uh, face boots, he's gonna be hitting fairly hard onto Ritter, and he's already got the poor man's shield. Whereas Ritter opted to go for boots first, so Ritter really taking a lot of damage from these just auto attack hits. And oh, Jay could be in trouble. He's trying to decide which way to go, but he's just gonna get frostbitten down and instantly nuked. I mean, that's not really a safe place to be standing for Jay. He could have possibly walked down this way and Byra striked over the hill to safety, but it looked like he thought maybe he could just walk past them, but he will be suffering for that with his life. No, oh, dude, tipping back up to this lane, wanting to maybe go for a kill, get some revenge finally. Radiant's middle tower is under it. attack. Uh, in the mid lane, haven't looked too much here, but Dragonite is having the hard time you'd expect. He's just bottle crowing, pretty much, I would assume. There's a bottle. Yeah, he's just bottle crowing, since that's all he can really do is just try and use the courier to keep his mana regeneration up and ensure that he can keep spamming out that breathe fire to, to stay farm and fat in the lane. So really his mana pool is just suffering, only 901 mana pool, he needs to kind of spend a little bit more time standing back, but still, he uh, is getting the last hits that he needs, and when those things wear off, actually Jay going to be going in, they're going to see disruption onto Jetta, stun coming out, nice two man stun, in fact, Arrow's not going to be landing. Actually, maybe he did land, I'm not too sure, but either way, Jenna is going to be going down, seeking to send him in the middle of all, but he's going to be able to just run back with 10 magic 1 charges, magic 6 charges, sorry, and he should be okay. So a nice little pickup, actually, he's just kind of chilling out there. I guess they don't have any AoE to really stop him, Crystal Bane's coming back now, so he's really got to watch his positioning. Central Ward is going to be dropped down now, he will turn around, just go for a stun, he uses the 10 magic 6 charges, Koala could be in a lot of trouble, Koala will be going down, nice defensive disruption, will be saving Jay's life for a moment there, but Frostbite as well as the Soul Assumption will be taking him down. So ultimately, uh, two for one trade really, they lost Jay, but they managed to get down Crystal Maiden as well as the Luna, the Luna is all important, since in terms of CS she was just getting, you know, even farm, but when you're running an aggressive trial and you want to ensure that that enemy carry is not getting really anything from the lane, and especially, actually Jules has decided to go for a ring of health first, so one of an extra regeneration, so not bothering to pick up the face boots for the extra attack damage, which I think is a little bit interesting, I mean it will definitely give her regeneration and staying duration within the lane, 
But it also does mean that her damage is going to be fairly weak. I mean, Marana has got terrible attack damage at the best of times. I mean, 53 plus 6, yay! Um, but, I mean, I feel like it's going to be kind of essential for her to get up fast, fast phase boots if she does want to play aggressively as she is right now. Anyway, in mid lane, Jay is going to be smoked up. Wanting to get a kill on NFR. NFR has popped his ultimate. Looks like he's heading down to the bot lane. Maybe want to go for a kill on Bounty Hunter. Do they have any detection? They do not have any detection, so I think this can be very hard to get a kill, but Jesse Vash is just playing so aggressively and forcing Ritter out of lane. He does have that track on him, but uh, Ritter's just going to be running back. He could use a Dark Pack to remove it, but at the same time, Dyer's Dark Pack does it take away your attack. health. So, when you're already that low, I mean, he doesn't know what level Jesse Vash has onto the Janata. He doesn't know what level he has on the uh, Shuriken Toss, so he doesn't want to, you know, use a Dark Pact and then just get Shuriken Tossed and killed. That is ours. Uh, uh. Luna now still just farming on the top lane. Um, it's going to be more aggressive wards planted. I mean, they're obviously wanting to secure the farm on the top lane. They had a ward up here, and now another ward planted down here to get vision of around this river area. And especially if anyone's TPing in, they're going to know about it. Um, we can see Crystal Maiden now doing a bit of rotation down to the mid lane. Maybe wanting to just do some warding, I would say. We'll just bite a tree. I see. So because they've got the ward here, getting rid of these trees does give them extra vision around to this area as well, if you can click the thing. If you can get rid of these trees, you'll be able to see up to all the way up to here. So um, she's just biting one of those trees as she casually walks past, but she could be in trouble because they do know she's there. They saw her just walking past. She's going to be planning a ward, but then oh, if she runs back uphill, she could be in a bit of trouble. It looks like maybe they want to try and initiate on the mid lane. Dragonite does have his ultimate up as well as a double damage room, but this could be a big turnaround. Joven will be able to get the trap off, and in they come. They spot out the Crystal Maiden, but stun is going to be going on to no. NFR turns around, pops a double damage rune, but OD uses the ultimate, doing huge damage, but Genesis is going to be able to back up to full health. NFR is going to be taking a lot of damage, but always going to be the one who falls from this. Not enough damage from Joven to turn it around, and Joven now is going to get stunned out. He has got the Astral Prisma, but it doesn't matter because Mega Kill onto Endless, using that Soul Assumption so many times in a team fight, really just taking them all down. And what another turnaround going the way of RRK on. Score is 2 to 5 at the moment. Mega kill strike, every single kill on the team, in fact, on that visage. So he's got his mana boots up now if he does choose to buy them. Uh, and I do expect Bounty Hunter to start doing some rotation soon. He's got his phase boots up, he's building into his drum, and he's level 8. So now is really the time for him to shine and start getting some kills with the track gold. It'd be really, really nice. And actually, Dragonite, gonna get disrupted. Oh, I popped an illusion room, sorry. Um, we'll be just heading to the mid lane, doing a bit of harassment there onto the OD. Big scary dragon illusions. Such derpy dragon face. So every time I look at it, I'm like, what a derpy face. Okay, now he's back to normal. Um, on bot lane, Ritter has been left alone finally. Since the bounty hunter has, well, was about to rotate off. But it looks like bounty hunter's going to come back down and just spend his time shutting down Ritter. He might want to rotate to the you know, top lane if there isn't engagement. He could easily rotate up there and help with some kills. But for the meantime, looks like Ritter's going to be his primary target. Get just getting a track here. gold. Track off and a couple of hits. Ritter not opting to use that dark pact. He will just get forced out of lane. But in mid lane, we will see another engagement. Oh, we're going to be using the disruption of the Dragonite. Dragonite trying to take down Jovan. Jovan taking a lot of harassment. Now Jen is going to turn around using the Crystal Maiden, Crystal Nova. And man, Jovan now, he's going to be forced to, you know, bottle himself up. Ooh, but. What is going on down here? Not much. Uh, Marana could be in a bit of trouble. We do see Rotation come out from Visage. Jules has got the leap and he will cast it now. Endless trying to get in range, but no, he's going to be using nice Visage familiars to be able to uh, delay the escape of Marana long enough to get in range to pass that Soul Assumption. Unstoppable streak now onto the Visage. Every single kill, six kills for his team on his side. This one fat little Visage. I mean, what's his net worth? Oh, it's, it's not that good actually. Actually, in terms of Nemeth, Mineski are really pulling ahead. Actually, Jay could be in trouble. He has got up. Yeah, he will be able to use that virus strike to get away, but Visage is still just chasing him down. Doesn't do any damage, though, because he hasn't got any uh, any soul charges up, so Jay will make it away. On the bot lane, though, Jesse Vash taking a lot of harassment from Ritter. Ari going to be flying out, not landing on. Ritter actually going to be turning around, popping some dust, and Ritter's going to be falling while he still has an exchange kill onto Jesse Vash. But that was a track kill going the way of the Mirana there, so an extra, hundred and, oh, extra 50 gold for her there. Um, NFI now. Looking at the Marana. Marana does not know that he's in the bushes there. Ready to initiate on him. We do see uh, Tippy down onto Endless, so Endless maybe wanting to go in, but Marana's just smelling right. We'll be backing out now.
And... It looks like Jules isn't opting for his normal Midas build this game, which is a little bit interesting. Every time I see him play, he goes for the Midas, but it looks like today he's happy with not getting a Midas. He's happy with, uh... Um, just, you know, straight damage items. But Ritter's now wanting to dive in. Jules is going to be in a lot of trouble. He has to not get hit by that pounce because you cannot leap out of the pounce. And if I pop Radiant's in a double damage rune, it looks like... Oh, okay, I'm going to be happy with just trying to take this tier one tower bot. Jules has not Radiant opted to level up that Moonlight Shadow, so they can't even use that to initiate in. The Visage Familiars are lurking in the bushes here too. And Armaneski going to be contesting this tower. There is a two down here with Jesse Vash getting some tracks off uh, onto Ritter, but Ritter's just going to dispel it with the Dark Pact. And oh, Jules, watch out. If he gets stunned, he's probably going to be going down. Ritter, in fact, wanting to dive. He misses the pound, so Jesse Vash goes invisible. Dust going to be popped by General. Jesse Vash is in a lot of trouble. He has got track up, so he can't even be useful. Stun going on to Jay. Jay going to be taking a lot of damage from Ritter, but at the same time, ah, okay, we're going to be taking down an arrow coming out from Jules, getting that last hit, and now disruption defensively going off onto Jovan. Jovan will be able to trap onto the Dragon Knight before trying to get him his way away. But Jenna will make it away just after the Sandy's Eclipse is possible. Now, two men stun coming out from Jay. He's on the run. Pounce misses yet again, but. Is Jay going to make it out okay? He's doing some mad jukes. He's trying to trap himself in the bushes there, but he's not going to be able to do it. Jovan just trapping himself, waiting until Jules comes in. Triple kill onto Jules, and now is he going to be able to get that last hit onto Ritter? Ritter does use his ultimate, trying to make himself away, using the Dark Pack to do a lot of damage, but he's just going to surf to make him lower on health, and that does mean that he's going to be going down as well. Attack. So score 7 to 10 in favor of RRK on, but still, triple kill on Jules, so a lot of gold for him, and he will actually go for that Midas after all of those kills. A lot of reliable gold going his way. It's unfortunate that Jesse Vash couldn't be there though because his track is going to be absolutely uh, integral for increasing the GPM onto all of the heroes from Mineski, especially the supports. They don't really want the Shadow Demon and the uh, Sand King to fall out of relevance. And at the moment, 0-3 to three onto Jay. Not Radiant's an ideal start for a Sand King. Is under attack. But still, Jules is really just pulling ahead. And, uh... Quite nice for him. In terms of gold. Oof, so, what are we seeing at this point? I mean, if you look at the gold graph, it's going in favor of Mineski, around about 1,000 experience, attack. was in favor of RK on, but it's going back and forth. You can kind of see both teams have got, you know, pretty nice team fighting lineups. Um, of course, all of these team fights have been with five from Mineski, but only four from RK on, because Luna has not been joining. Luna's just been farming, and she has got up a helm of the Dominator. She's been stacking the hard camp here, and she will go stack those Ancients, which have already been stacked once by the Slark. So, I mean, RK are doing a really nice job of just distracting from the Luna, and Mineski might want to spend a bit more time just following the Luna around and really shutting her down, because um, that's going to be pretty much their best bet, is to just make sure the Luna doesn't get too fat. Um, but Korea going to be taken down killed. there by, uh, oh, there it is, poor thing, by Jesse Vash. He could be in a bit of trouble. They are going to pop the dust now. He is on the run. He's probably not going to go invis because of the dust slow, but he is using those face boots to juke up and down the hills. Visage Familiars are chasing him down. He should be good to make it out. Dust is about to wear out, and he could just go invis at that point. He might turn around and get a track on him to Koala. But no, it looks like he's going to be happy to get away, but at the same time, mid lane, oh, in a lot of trouble. NFR going to be using the ultimate form to get that range start off, and oh, is just going to be defensively disrupting himself for the last second there. I don't think he's got anywhere to go, but he might just get some spells out before he goes down. Yeah. Just as use one shadow poison. At the same time, in the jungle, Koala could be in a bit of bit of trouble. He is just going to keep farming. Jesse Vash, level one, to level attack. two toss now. In fact, so not that much damage coming out from him. I don't think he can instantly kill off Koala. Koala has got those uh, power treads as well as a magic wand and a pot, so he's not really too worried. He's just going to go back and heal himself up. Jules is the other key hero, and with his Midas, he's going to be returning to the mid lane to try and help out. But Pound's going off to Jovan. Jovan getting a bit such a melee sound. There's probably no sight of escape for him. Rana does use the Moonlight Shadow, but of course, there's dust on the Crystal Maiden, so it wouldn't have helped anyway. And Jovan going to be going down straight after Oa, so 7 to 12 now, going in favor of RK on. And not really finding these kills with this Bounty Hunter that they really probably are after. I mean, Bounty Hunter's got a double damage rate at the moment, but attack. still, he hasn't really found anyone to kill just yet. He is chasing down four heroes who are heading up to the Sand King on the top lane. He was just trying to get even a moment's farm, but he has to get out of there now because they're all coming up and he could be one dead little Sand King in just a moment. And looking at the net worth, Jules actually pulled significantly ahead of our Koala Dota. Not only because of that Midas, but also because of all the kills he's got. Koala, if you look at his score, um, he is only uh, 0 to 1, so not too hot in terms of kills. They do have a lot of towers, but tower I mean, when you've got kills going onto a carry, it does make a big difference. Those kills in the early game really give you a nice Radiant's goal boost, especially with the track goal. 
They're trying to do a T1 exchange for a T1, but there's not that much pushing ability Radiant's coming out from a Mineski. I mean, they're doing what they can, but really, it's, it's a very slow and arduous push when you compare Dyer's it with uh, uh, Arcane. We've got the Visage from Lee's as well as that Dragonite. And actually, Jules can be in a lot of trouble. Pounce, not going to be latching onto him. He does leave away in time. Oh, was also there to help out, but the mid tower will go down. Radiant getting the last hit. Actually, Luna is. What is Luna doing? She was going for a bit of a run. Ari going to be landing onto her head. She doesn't get a chance to get the Eclipse off. She's going to be going down. Last hit going away of Joven, who has got that four stuff up now. What a crazy little Luna that was. So that was a really nice boost of gold there, and, and shutting down Koala too. Koala is going for Yasha, so a good amount of uh, damage going onto him it means he could join the team fights earlier if he needs to, but at the same time, he probably, I would say a BKB is going to be essential this game, given the heroes are versus. I mean, one thing about Luna versus Shadow Demon is Shadow Demon can even just, Dyer's top tower is under you know, attack. get in fast enough to use the disruption onto Luna. You have to remember, she's going to have those two illusions of herself doing 120% damage to her own team with the glaives and all so I mean Luna has to really watch out for what items she buys and how she plays because Shadow Demi can really literally Dyer's just destroy her make herself destruct fallen. especially if she doesn't get any kind of escape mechanism so BKB is going to be her best option but I mean if she keeps you know wandering into the enemy jungle and getting picked off it's going to be a pretty hard uh, situation for her at that point No, Jesse Bash doing some hunting still. He's got his drums up, so really nice move speed onto him. And it looks like Luna is going to be his primary target, of course. No dust up onto Endless, so this could be his chance to go in, but it looks like he will just be playing, you know, quite safe and backing out at that point. And and if I mid lane is going to get initiated on Moonlight Shadow going out there, even pulling to use Saturday's Eclipse, but not enough damage. Crystal made throwing out the frost. Crystal Nova thingy, freezing field, but not catching anyone in. Apart from Joven, he comes in and just says, whatever, I'll kill you. Lol, lol, lol. Um, and Crystal Maid will be falling there. <laughs> she could have just walked back, but I guess she really wanted to get off that mad late freezing field. Double damage. My pet thanks you. And now uh, Bunny Hunter still just harassing Luna. He's going to be in the track off into her. Luna actually. Still no core items up. At the same time as a 18 minute Lincoln's Midas face boots comes up on two jewels. So a lot of farm onto jewels. Networth he really is pulling ahead and so is Joven just because of those kills. So yes wise Luna is winning the race. Apart from denies. Oh my god. Joven boo. What you doing? Um, but yeah kill 0 to 2 on her and she's really finding it a lot hard you know, to really do anything. She's getting a lot of harassment onto her and Ritter wanting to go in on the Marana maybe, but she's got a double damage ring, we'll be doing a lot of damage attack. to him. However, there is a three-man smoke gang coming out. Ritter probably just doing a bit of baiting, but Jules no. not having any of it. Actually, maybe he is. Maybe Jules does have a have a little bit of it. Maybe Jules is going to go forward now, and that's going to be the death of Jules. You have to leap into the bushes, Jules, or you're going to be in a lot of trouble. In they come! In fallen. they come! Freezing Crystal Nova is going to be coming up from Jules. He does leap into the bushes and TP out. Are they going to be able to get the mission? No! She will just be able to TP out. Just the last second, and now Jay has actually farmed up a blinker dagger, so... This is going to be quite scary now, I would say, for RK on to fight, because Luna's nowhere near that BKB. She hasn't even started farming it. Her farm's been shut down quite significantly. You just see how Jessie Vash is literally following her around the map. She's trying to take the ancients down now, but if she takes too much damage, Jessie Vash is going to turn around and kill her. Um... She really has to watch her positioning. Of course, her allies are doing a nice job of kind of distracting attack. this 4 bot to say, yo, um, I'm doing this, but the ward is going to be catching sight of her. They can they can just see her. She's not taking too much damage, so she should be okay, but she really has to watch out because if she gets too low, they are going to go in, and she's kind of diving in a little bit. He's getting ready. Jesse Vash wants to get the kill. Koala's getting low now. Oh, this is going to be the death of Koala if he doesn't watch out. Rich is there to help out, though, so... That, that's a good thing, and actually, no, the whole team's here now, so this could be a suicide for a killer koala, but no, in comes Sankey, gonna be able to get the stun off. Do not manage to get the track kill off there, did they? But, um, either way, that will be, I think they need to get the track off. Defensive disruption are gonna be saving the life of Jesse Bash from now, and Jesse Bash will be finally going down, but it is with the use of a freezing field as well as a rid of pouncing forward. Now, Endless is gonna be the next target. Double stun, not gonna be landing, but it doesn't matter because Endless is taking way too much damage, and it's gonna get auto attacked down by Jules, and maybe kill strike on a Jules, so. Poor Luna, she did get that stack, farmed up about 
uh, 700 gold, but was taken down by a double century drop. They really don't want to have to deal with that frustrating bounty hunter, but it's too little too late. The damage was done, and yet again, this carry going down. Alright, now Crystal Maiden's had enough of this bounty hunter crap and she's picked up a gem. So it's some nice dewarding will be going um, across the map, though most of the wards honestly are planted by our uh, Kaon at this point. They know they're a little bit on the back foot and they have got really aggressive wards being planted down all across the map to try and ensure that they can, you know, regain map control and regain the con game into their favour, but it still is a... Uh, it still is a hard situation I suppose for them. I mean, looking at the golden experience graph, it is, you know, going in favour of Mineski now while being even for a lot of the game, it started piling up in their favour. I'm just going to take a drink, sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, and Joven, I mean, he's got two mech as well as four stuff done. He's farming towards that uh, hex now, so big items coming out on him. Wee. Um, and now it looks like... Oh, okay, we're just kind of looking around the lunar at this point. They know that the losing control of the game. Um, well, really, because the lunar's just been dying so many times, they're not getting the farm she needs. They've really been doing a nice job on Mineski's side of just kind of harassing her. And you can just see how Bounty Hunter is following her. He's literally just following her around the map. Um, he might just get a track off before backing out. Yeah, it looks like he will just be trying to get some track off. Crystal Maiden will be finding Sand King, who's Allies hiding. Uh, looks like they want to go in on Luna, just. Harassing her down. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Um, you know, just while she's trying to farm up in the jungle. Oh, and whoa, oh. huge arrow to Ritter's head. Yes, we'll be taking him down. Jules an MVP. No, I'm kidding. Jules sucks. No, I'm kidding. Oh my god, in comes Jay, initiating onto poor Koala. Yet again, Koala is gonna be going down. He does get the eclipse off, but only one loose has been flying the air before he dies. Immediate buyout from Slack. He wants to come rejoin this fight, but triple kill already onto Jules. Jules wanting to take down Envar. Envar has got the big heavy pop. He's trying to kill anyone he can, just flashes on the run. Stunned from Jay. Gonna be landing onto Ritter, but Jay's gonna be going down there. Gem of Fruit dropped onto the ground. And they're chasing after Oa. Koala has uh, bought out as well and wants to rejoin this fight. They want to turn this fight back into their favor. Oh, we're gonna be taking a lot of damage, but defensively disrupt uh, defensively astral. And now, oh, a nice push up onto the hill, and they have no way to catch sight of him. And now Jules is back into the fight. There is a really low health dragon knight chasing him around, and I think Jules wants to go back in on this. Arrow not gonna be landing onto NFR, but they do have the track hold on him. Sorry, track onto him now, so they're chasing him down. Jules could just leave forward and get a star storm off, but no, they don't even need to. They will just auto attack him to death, as well as probably get the courier if they want. Gotcha. Oh no, it's our own courier. Um, wow, and now <laughs> rejoining the fight is Koala, as well as really yet again. Jules just casually trying to do some farming up, using his miters before leaping away and score 17 to 16 in favor of Mineski, but barely. Those two buyouts are really, really helping <laughs> turn that team fight back around into their favor. They managed to pick off Oa. Jay, um, Jesse Vash as well. Jesse Vash getting taken down is pretty sad news bears. <clears throat> but Jules still outliving this team fight. And also almost got up a Desolator now. So that's going to be huge damage coming out from the Marana. Especially onto the Dragon Knight um, and the Slark. And it looks like now, ah, oh, okay, I'm going to be using this advantage while heroes on the side of Mineski are dead to take the Roshan. And this version will fall very, very quickly with the uh, medallion picked up by Your Endless. Koala getting the Aegis, so a double life onto him now, and maybe he's going to be able to farm with that BKB finally, which is going to be absolutely essential. Jules now on the top lane on the hunt. He could throw an arrow onto Koala Dota and then kill him and take that Aegis down, but I don't know if he's got enough damage. But with the uh, help of Jesse Vash, he very well might. Jules are looking to get an aim onto this arrow. Koala is backing out now. He's going to throw the arrow out. No, that's a, that's not going to hit. You got you to throw it out the hero, Jules. But Jules with that the Desolator doing huge damage to Koala. I mean, Koala's just on the run immediately. Track's going to be going off, and his allies are rotating up to try and give him a hand, but it could be too little too late. Um, Jay almost got up a four staff now as well. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Jesse Vash just 
farming. He's got his own, almost got his BKB up. Uh, Jules, we leaping forward. Um, just farming up. Really, everyone's just kind of farming up at this point. With the ages up, Maneski are going to find it hard to make any plays. They might want to wait for the BKB up onto the uh, sand, the sinking onto the bounty hunter before they just start to start pushing. In addition to that, Joven has almost got up that. That hex, that's only a couple of hundred gold away. 100 gold, in fact. 75 gold. 25 gold. 10 gold. Done. He's got his hex up now, so... I mean, Mineski could take a fight now. Um, with the Aegis up on the Luna, which would be a little bit hard. But of course, the longer they wait, the more farm Luna is going to be getting, so... This does give them a nice advantage. Luna's got the BKB off, so BKB age is done on her, but at the same time, I mean, a bigger item of a hex is done. BKB done up on the bounty hunter in about, about 500 gold, so that's going to be a huge item by as why as well. And I mean, Marana, she's going to have up a manta in 1.5k gold too, so I mean, I'd say the bigger items are coming up from Maneski, and that should be showing in the golden experience with, yeah, gold around about 12,000, experience around about 10,000. So this BKB on Luna is going to have to do a lot of work, and I don't even think it's going to be enough at this point. Just because she's going to cast that BKB, the auto attacks from the Bounty Hunter, the auto attacks from the Marana are going to be doing huge. And actually, NFR going to get arrowed out. Rid is coming in to save the day. No leave coming up from Jules, and Chak will be going off to NFR, but Marana costs her ultimate. Why don't you use that Moonlight Shadow to play a little bit more defensively, save the day. She's got the arrow, but she's not going to cast it because they are running a little bit too far away. Jules will just be pushing this tower down. She's got the backup. Jay hiding in the bushes with the four star. Jesse Vash getting the tracks off into everyone ever. Ensuring that they've got that map vision they need. And Jay could kind of blink in now and get a kill on someone, but it looks like he's going to play a little more defensively. They will just be attack. taking towers Dyer's while they've got this, I suppose, lack of advantage, really. Oh, but an aggressive TP incoming from NFR. Of course, they don't have that ultimate. But Jay is going to be going straight in. He's going to be able to duel just to a huge damage. Hex coming out. Jules in a lot of trouble. Jules is going to get defensively disrupted. He doesn't have the leap, though. He is probably going to be going down now. But yet another disruption coming out. They're just keeping him alive by disruption after disruption. Jules is on the run. But no, he's going to be taken down by Endless, who gets that 1.1k gold streak. But Endless is going to be falling in exchange for that. And now, Koala, who's come back in after that Aegis has dropped, is going to be on the run. Jesse Vash is kind of chasing him down. Joven taking a lot of harassment. Rita could be falling there. Rita is going to go down as well. So, four down for the side of RRK on. Luna will make it out with the track hold on her, but track hold. Oh my god, it's just track. Molly, it's just track. But still, I mean, the tower goes down, and not really all that much that RRK on can do to defend. I mean, I don't know if Mineski can really go high ground. It looks like they want to try. And given that Slack did buy out his. Time to respawn is a long time, 50 seconds left. So it's around about a minute or something because, uh, well, you buy it anyway. Hex onto Koala. Oh, why did you come forward, Koala? Koala should be going down now. In fact, he will be. Disruption of the Crystal Maiden just delaying this push. And with Koala down yet again, one minute on his respawn, 35 seconds. This could be the tier 3 tower, but it looks like maybe Mineski want to play it a bit safe. They are going to back out for the meantime. But BKB now done onto the bounty hunter. And Radiant's top tower is under attack. Well, 22 to 17. I mean, they did take down the. I mean, she got disrupted twice there. And if she'd had that mantra, she probably would have been able to make it out alive. That was a really nice combo of disruption. Actually, NFR leaving the base. I don't know why he did that, but he's going to get taken down. They're picking out the Roshan, but Roshan's been up for ages, so I don't know what you're talking about, Jay. Five minutes, four minutes, six minutes. And Jules will just be pressuring down the top lane. His allies are, you know, lurking primarily around the uh, bottom lane, just wanting to catch someone out of position. They have got really aggressive wards planted, so we'll be seeing the team of RRK uh, just leaving the base and heading towards Jules. Shadows. Marana going to be popping that ultimate to make sure she has got the uh, viable escape mechanism. And oh my god, they're diving behind the tower. Endless is going to be the target of choice, and he's just—he just got destroyed. That was like. How did he even die that quick? That was like one hit and he was just dead. Now Rido is on the run. He's got an invisibility room, but they did have a gem. I think they must have lost the gem though. But still, Rido needs to watch out. Jay actually is going to be going for a little bit too aggressively. And it could be spotted Dyer's out at this top point. Tower is under attack. And Dyer's Jules is just going to be pushing the top tower with that mantra up. Pretty good to just take towers and win games. 
She is actually getting chased down by Ritter as well as Jenna, but she does just leap to freedom and now they will be going for that last T2 tower to get that high ground up. Ready for the push in. Lincoln's just been put onto Joven, Dyer's so Joven can force top. himself forward. Attack. Looks like he's going to be going for maybe a Shiva's Guard next. He's picked up another Mystic Staff, so huge damage onto Dyer's him each attack. I mean, that is a scary amount of damage that's going to be coming up from him. An arrow! Wow, whoa, Dota. But in goes Joven. Initiation onto our NFI. NFI almost dropped out instantly. Ritter, though, also did a lot of trouble, but he will be okay. NFI now pops that BKB and goes back into the team fight. But oh my god, Jules gets him down to one hit. But Ritter's gonna be the next one in trouble. His ultimate's on cooldown. Jules wants to dive in, but no nice massage from Lily's sons. We'll be saving the day. Mech gonna be popped on Jules. Just blinks back out, leaves oh, back out. He's ready to go back in again in just a couple of minutes. Shiva's Guard now picked up on Joven. Luna, I mean, she's got the Eclipse, she's got the BKB, but really, is she going to be able to defend this? I mean, they need NFR. In fact, no, she's going to get hexed out. Just about using that BKB just to take down the Crystal Maiden almost instantly. He's auto attacking no death. Jay going to steal that last hit. And now they are on the run, but at the same time, Jules is chasing down Ritter in the base. Ritter is going to get taken down. Luna is finally ready to go in. She casts the Eclipse, she casts the BKB, but Moonlight Shadow will be saving their lives, and Joven is just way too tanky even to care. And now, in the base. Ooh, Jesse Vash, what is he still doing there? He is going to die, but Jay comes in, misses the stun on everyone. He does get the epicenter off, but doesn't do that much. And now a bit of a miscommunication there. Joven just going to be disrupted, and Astral's out, NFR. Ritter now in the middle of the team fight, but Arrow on to NFR. NFR will be going down now. Will he get four stuffed out? But no, too many attacks coming out from Jules now. Jules is chasing down Endless. Endless is going to be going down next, and everyone is just in the base. Oa is going to be using that the purge onto Ritter. Ritter will kill off Jay before going down. Koala is still just farming on the bot lane. Joven wants to go in on him. Joven can auto attack him, but no, he's going to be able to astral himself before he dies. And now I think that Joven. He's going to be in a bit of trouble unless he gets auto attack down. No, Jesse Vash will get the last in the Crystal Men, but not before he kills off Joven and in the base. Oa takes down Koala and now Oa's on the run. He's got the disruption. He will cast it onto uh, the other dude, but he's going to be taking a lot of harassment from the tower. He will try and earn himself under the tower, but that doesn't really work. And now Endless being chased down by Jesse Vash, who I don't know if he's going to be able to get the kill, but if he does, it's going to be pretty much a GG because he's going to be five dead. No. Endless will make it back to the base. The Rax did fall in the mid lane, and now Radiance Jules is just pushing down the bot racks by himself. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. My Dyer's bottom base. barracks are under attack. And this bottom racks will be falling now. I can't imagine how uh, uh, Kane is going to come back from this. And if I now in a lot of trouble, it's just going to get a couple of hit, and this is when Ain Outworld Devourer becomes very, very scary. In fact, GG is going to be called out at this point. So, GG, well played to both teams. Thank you, of course, to Steel Series for sponsoring this tournament. Thanks to Dota Talk as well for very kindly allowing me to cast this. Um, this is game one of a best of three, so we've got one, if not two more games coming up between AMD Mineski and RRK on. Thanks for watching, guys.